Um, is, that, is that a cat? Um, yeah, it's my buddy Jude. Okay, yeah, cool. Let's do this. At ClickUp, we're all about processes and productivity. If you're a project manager, I'd be willing to bet that those are two of your goals as well. As the project manager, your responsibilities include having a plan for making the project plan. It's kind of like brushing your teeth before you go to the dentist. Like any process, there are steps that you need to follow to help ensure everything runs smoothly. And we're here to help. Today, we're gonna help you with your project planning and share our project management checklist that you can use for that upcoming project. You ready? Number one, set the vision, goals, and objectives. One of the basics of project management is setting goals and objectives for your project. With your goals and objectives, try and answer these two high-level questions. What are you trying to do? and what problem are you solving? These questions will help you to find the project deliverables and determine how they solve the problem you wanna fix. Setting achievable goals is an integral part of top management processes. You can establish a vision statement and determine the effort required for the team so that stakeholders and workers are on board to complete it. Goals also help everyone understand what the project can do. You should ask yourself these questions when setting goals. What is the business case? And how does the project help with overall business objectives? What's the benefit of the project? And what are the resources required? Number two, meet with stakeholders and other project managers. These are the people personally invested in the progress and the end results of the project. They have expectations for the project planning methods and it's your job as a project manager to meet with them. Some examples of project stakeholders are clients, vendors, internal management, leaders in other departments, and individual contributors to the project. That's you, Jude. If you wanna learn more about project stakeholders, you can check out our previous video on that. Just check out the link in the description below. Number three. Gather specs and requirements for the project team. The next step in your project management checklist is to gather the specifications and requirements for your project. This will depend on the type of project you're working on. In general, your specs and requirements should include a few result-oriented criteria, like project success factors, project failure factors, test specifications, and reports on the test and success factors. Number four, make the project plan. So you've done your research, understand the requirements, and are now ready to make a plan. Your natural inclination may be to jump straight to make a timeline and schedule out the tasks. But before you create the project schedule, you must consider what specific steps need to be done. No two project management checklists will be the same. And this step is crucial for you and your project success. Don't forget about risk management and how you will handle any challenging issues or change requests that arise. You'll also want to define the project scope in your project management plan so nothing goes off the rails. You also want to consider the project dependencies. Order your tasks and set up task dependencies to manage milestones and save time. Number five, create the project budget. I can feel your little eyes looking at me. <laughs> Make me okay. Once you're finished with the project plan, it's time for the nitty gritty, the budget. This is a time-based estimate of what everything will cost for the project. Think about what it would take to get the project done to the best of your ability and within scope, and then reflect on the number. Did you get that, Jude? Okay. Then you'll know what to cut and what to keep. Start with a large estimate, then work your way down to a more specific iteration. Each budget will also have direct and indirect costs. Direct costs include labor, hardware, project management software, and any research-related costs like travel or focus groups. Indirect costs, on the other hand, have ramifications beyond your project, like renting office space or office supplies. These costs could be used for and benefit other projects too. Depending on the project, these costs may not need to be factored in. Number six, allocate your resources. This is the part where you begin assigning work or assign tasks to specific team members. Think about the skill sets of each person, their previous experience and their roles and responsibilities within the company. Many times, it's a given that a certain team member will work on a project. Other times, you may be creating a specialized team where each of these factors will be more important. In addition to personnel, you may need to think about schedules and equipment. Do you need to order more parts? 
What additional software do you need? What is your current inventory? And is it enough to get the job done? These considerations are part of resource allocation. You're in charge of aligning schedules with the number of people that you have. So it may mean asking for additional hires or contracting with other vendors to finish the project on schedule. Number seven, create a schedule. After determining what tasks need to be done and the resources you need to do them, you can create a schedule and timeline for your projects. This involves estimating the amount of time each task will take and then plotting those to give a reasonably estimated project completion date. You may want to have specific contributors estimate the time for you or revise your project schedule once you have a few estimates in place. Number eight, set your communication plan. In this plan, you will create project milestones for check-ins and updates. This could be through daily stand-ups, such as in Agile Project Management weekly meetings or project kickoff meetings. Also, think about how you will keep the stakeholders, project sponsors, and other stakeholders informed in a clear manner as they're likely working on multiple projects at once. Part of the communication plan will be how you document each of the project phases. And finally, number nine, monitor your progress. Are you on track? Did you meet the deadline? These are important questions as you begin your project. Think about the deliverables that you need and apply this to your project schedule. Also consider lessons learned on previous projects you've managed. And be sure that all pertinent project information is available for your team. The more detail you can provide up front, the better. At the end of the day, there will always be surprises, but as long as you follow this checklist and are committed to the project plan, you and your team will be set up for success. And special shout out to my little buddy Jude. You did so good today. He's a little tired. But if you're looking to have a little Jude in your life, definitely check out the San Diego Humane Society where you can rescue, you can foster, and you can volunteer. Check them out, sdhumane.org. Is, I think so. I don't know. Okay. That's amazing. Perfect. So good. The cat whisper. Okay.